In this video, I will discuss the working of the exact series of system calls, a family of system calls. I will mainly focus on exec L, exec uh, LP, and exec VP. Um, the exec system call, uh, in a nutshell, replaces a process's image with a new image. You may recall that when a process is loaded, so let's say we have a program, some program A on disk, when the program A is loaded, it is, the image is copied into the, into the RAM. Uh, for now, we'll say all of it is copied and uh, from the image we get the code and the text but basically we have code we have data uh, we have the heap and we have the stack and the operating system when it loads it keeps a process control block with respect to that so this is process uh, with res uh, process a which is holding the program a right now so the idea of exec l and we'll look at the actual an example to see the syntax of each of these but in a nutshell what exec or exec l all of these really do is if in your code if let's say we have an example like this let's say the program a looks something like this int main and somewhere in your code let's say you were to do an exec and you have a program B on the disk and if you were to do an exec on with program B and this is not exactly the syntax but if you were to do exec, exec like that then what's what the system is going to do the operating system is going to do is it's going to take this image B and overlay it on this so this image might take less or more but the original process the process is now the PCB still is the same but this image is actually the image which is corresponds to this new image it used to be the old image now it's this new image which is the image of process process B and process B if process B also was a program obviously then then the program counter starts there so now wherever it was previously the PCB is updated so that we are now pointing to the beginning of this new program uh, the original process is still there it's only that its content the image has been replaced with this new image so let's take a look at how these work by with with a couple of simple examples here's our first example we have a very simple program here and we're using this version of exec which is exec lp which which allows us to specify the program that we want to run just as a file name so this is just the file name exec l it's a similar kind of, ex if the same example were done using exec L, I would have to actually give it the full path. Maybe date is in bin slash date, in which case I'd have to say bin slash date, date, and then car star null. So that's just the syntax. It takes a list of arguments. If, for example, if I were running a different program, let's say I wanted to do an exec LP, um, but I want to do a slash bin slash ls, but I want to pass some arguments to bin ls. So ls is the program. Um, if I wanted to say, for example, uh, I want to get all uh, long listing of all uh, file all files in this directory uh, which are some foo star dot c 
then I would do that and I would pass it a characters star null and this is how the the system knows that we finished passing all the arguments so we pass the list of arguments and typically in in your in within for ls these come in as rv of zero is that guy rv of one is this and rv of two is this so let's take an ex another example this is a slightly bigger sim uh, slightly different example but the point of this example is that we're going to see that a uh, fork and exec kind of work together um, it's rarely the case that you just uh, suddenly decide within the middle of your program to uh, to change the functionality of your program by executing another program often uh, what we see is we want a, a, a process to create a child process so a parent process um, create a child creates a child process and we know that the child if if we just do a fork the child is an exact copy of the parent so whatever the parent is the child is an exact copy of that now that might not be of much use often instead the child can then overlay its image with a different program so that's what this example is demonstrating in this example we have a uh, we have uh, uh, the fork system call which is going to create a child process and inside the child process I'm going to do an exec LP and by the way this the way this program would run if you were to run it is it'll prompt you with a command and if let's say you type in the word ls it's going to take the string ls which is what read line uh, library it gives you it prompts you with a string and then whatever you type is what it returns and then it, it returns a null if it's if i hit a control d which is an end of end of file uh, uh character so um it'll it'll repeatedly give us strings because i have a in this in a while loop and every time i read a string i'm simply going to call call exec lp so the parent in this case is going to uh, for if I type in ls, then it's gonna execute ls. If I type in uh, and and then it's and then the parent is gonna wait for the child to complete, and once it completes, it's gonna go back. Now, in this particular example, I'm not interested in the return status or exit status of the child, so I just returned. I I am passing a null pointer. So um, so this here would have been replaced by. Uh, int star or star some uh, variables uh, let's say status of some kind if status were defined as an int status then we can actually get the exit code of the of the command that just ran so uh, alternatively if i were to run date then it would work also but this simple example will only work if the command I'm giving is a single string. No spaces, or in other words, no arg arguments. So let's take a third example. This third example is a little more involved. This is pretty much the beginnings of uh, of writing your own shell. So what it's doing is we are we're gonna prompt the user. Uh, the it's gonna print a command and whatever the user types in, it's gonna take that. And I have a function here that I'm not gonna show you. I'm just gonna tell you what it does. It I'm gonna call this function called parse string, which takes the string. What if, for example, if I give you the, if I type in the command, let's say ls minus l um, some directory, uh, some directory that I want to see the contents of, then what parse string does is it takes this string and breaks it up into an array of four pointers. The first one is going to point to a string, a null terminated string. 
Uh, the second one is also going to point to a null terminated string with minus L. And the third is also going to point to a null terminated string, which is just directory zero. And the last one is just going to point to a character star null. So I, I have a routine like this that I, that I wrote, which should be pretty easy to write using string tokenizer. The string talk function will, um, will allow you to do this. But in any event, now I'm able to run this program using, um, using, uh, uh, exec vp, which now is slightly different from exec v, exec v, uh, I'm sorry, exec l and exec lp because what this one takes is um, its second argument is a uh, is a uh, array of arguments uh, with null as the terminal So this now is a program that's capable of handling multiple command line arguments.